Hello and welcome to the Carrier Conversations podcast. I'm Andy Barr, founder of Barr Transportation, and we are so glad you decided to tune in today. At Barr Transportation, we are the premier transportation brokerage that focuses on over the road or LTL food and beverage transportation, operating in Canada and US. Now, whether you are a company driver, owner operator, or an owner of a small, medium, or mega sized carrier, this podcast is for you. We'll cover how to run a profitable carrier, how to recruit the best drivers and keep them, and so, so much more. Lastly, at the end of each episode, make sure to stick around because we'll share with you how you can apply to be on the podcast yourself. Interviews are about 15 minutes long, and I'll leave you with my favorite quote, preparation plus opportunity equals success. That's all for now. Keep those wheels turning, and I'll see you on the inside. All right, and welcome back. So this is episode number two, and today we are with Javier with R&E Carriers. Javier, welcome to the Carrier Conversations podcast. So glad to have you today. I'm glad to be here as well. Thank you for having me. (laughs) Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, we are getting ready for Christmas, and we've got uh, 2021 almost behind us, looking into 2022. Yeah. And... You know, we're going to dive into three main three main topics today. We're going to go over spot freight and how brokers decide what carriers they work with on a continual basis. Uh, number two, markets are always changing. So how does a broker and a carrier uh, manage that market shift? And then number three will be people working from home or remotely in different states, things of that nature. How does that affect the office productivity and uh company culture so before we dive in uh, javier if you wouldn't mind please give our audience uh and listeners a an overview of who you are and how you got into logistics yeah sure thing um 27 years old uh, i'm a father of two <laughs> uh happy father actually and uh, Actually, the, the way that I got this job, it was basically very random. I just had a friend of mine recommend me that they were working on a broker company, actually. And uh, I got a little interview and thank God I was able to get here. And ever since I started working with the freight industry, per se, since I began with the brokers, I actually liked it. I felt that it was a very dynamic, very fun place. It, it's not easy. It's a lot of work and a lot of uh, commitment. But I find it, um, how can I say, uh, gratifying. I like it. Sure. It's, it. It's a place that it's not only numbers that you interact with people. So I like that job very much. I was there for about two years. And a few years later, a friend of mine that worked with me, he recommended me to the carrier that I'm right now, r and Carriers. Uh, that was about a year ago. And here I am. And I'm actually very happy. I, I like this business. I think it's a, a, a huge potential that we still have a lot of room um, and a lot of things that can go very, very well for the freight industry. And there's always the need to move things. And it's just going to keep growing and growing and growing a lot. hundred percent. Yeah. The transportation space is, is anything but uh, decreasing. So you've got, mm-hmm. you know, more and more people are, are living, they're populating the earth and obviously everyone eats. So if you're in the food space and food, fan- food transportation, you're, you're going to have continual demand. You've yeah. got the driver mm-hmm. shortage. You've got, um, you know, pandemics to to throw a a wrench into the mix so it's all it's all keeps things very interesting and that's a great word it's never Um, steady yes exactly so just to give the audience a little bit of background so we work with uh, javier on a pretty continual basis for our loads in florida they do a great job for us and wanted to have him on to talk about these three things so yeah without further ado javier so spot freight so how does a broker or a carrier, um, how do I say, how does a broker or a carrier decide who to work with? Yeah. So from a broker's perspective, and we always look for someone who is competitive price-wise with the market, but who is reliable, right? So, yes. uh, and who has capacity. So capacity and reliability are two different things. Capacity says, I have a truck. Okay. But then reliability says, 
Yeah. Well, the load went from A to Z, start to finish with no issues, right? Yes. We didn't get a phone call and say the truck broke down and it's two hours before the shipper closes for the day. You know, it's, it's, you know, it just went smoothly. And of course, no carrier is perfect. There are issues that come up. Uh, but if there is an issue or maybe a possibility of an issue, we have communication and we have communication mm -hmm. early in the process. So as a broker, that's what I look for. I look for someone who is going to be competitive in the market, who's going to have trucks uh, in the areas that we need them, when we need them, and also who doesn't have service failures, who is just reliable and uh, doesn't make us scramble at the end of the day, at the end of the day to you know recover the load. Those are the three things that we look for as a broker and a carrier. Um, so yeah, I'll turn it over to you, Javier. What do you look for in a broker? Well, I think we uh, we like to find ourselves in a middle point with what you said, since of course, uh, um, regardless of the MCs, and that's the basic stuff that we need to share because of the RTS, the, the factoring company, as you know, it depends really how much on the credit as well. And what we actually look into a broker when we try to make a good relationship, it's the way that they work with us. Since what happens, um, I, for, for example, today, I had one of the brokers that I called for a load that I had a available driver. And uh, I'm not gonna say names, <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything else, but uh, I presented the driver, I, get, I, I got all the information that I needed, but then, uh, it was like very uh, strange. I mean, they just said, no, this is not the same carrier. They placed me on hold for like one minute and then dropped the call. So when, when we find those situations, we know that this uh, broker is not like very uh, compelling to work with since they're not going to be able to to hold to their promises since they, they don't care, basically. So we, we try to find uh, brokers that they care about the driver since they know that that's actually a person that's driving a truck. It's not a machine. And they know that uh, he has a family, he gets tired. So we try to find brokers that they actually care about us, the, bro the driver, and they will be at our side when something comes up. Well, of course, we, we don't want anything to come up. <laughs> we want things to go smooth. Sure. But there are brokers that they are very, uh, how can I say this, cold. They're very, uh, they, they, they don't find themselves with empathy. So I think yeah. that's important since when you find a relationship with a broker, it's not always, it's not always professional, but it's also something, hey, are you okay? How are you doing? Um, uh, do you need anything? I have these loads. It's like a friendship, right? And always in the professional sense. But that's what we look for, like a guy that we can depend on and that they can depend on us. Yeah. That's with the trustworthy one. I think it's a balance, right? You want mm -hmm. uh, the, the broker to be uh, have empathy, but at the same time, the broker is, is looking for the carrier to be responsible mm -hmm. and, and hold their, each other accountable. Yeah. So it makes me think of a situation today where we were following up with a carrier who we've been asking for the BOLs, uh, I don't know, like 10 days for 10 days. And oh, they, he, they keep sending in these partial BOLs, like, you know, one page here, three pages here, two pages here. And, you know, af after they sent in everything, we're still missing two pages and <laughs> they're getting mad because they haven't gotten paid yet. And stuff like that. Like, listen, we cannot process this load until we have the BOLs. Yeah. So, so they're getting mad at, uh, at our ops team because they're calling to get the bills. And so, you know, they're just, you know, all, they, again, I'll, I won't name names, but they, they resort to like the scare tactic, right? Get emotional, mm -hmm. get louder. And they think they'll win that way. Yeah. But, but I mean, if you, if, if you are a broker that is successful, you're not going to get emotional. Number one. So you're just going to stick to the facts. Just say, listen, sir, we cannot process the the uh, the paperwork without the we cannot process the load without the paperwork. Yeah. And the longer you wait, you know, the longer that prevents that from happening. And you know, pretty soon, you know, fines will happen because we yeah. have to approach the receivers, and that takes extra money and two weeks to get 
BOLs from Publix and, you know, it's just well, hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. Page. No, yeah. It's, it's very, very expensive. <laughs> yeah. And so anyway, so not to belabor the point. So, but, but yeah, I think we understand, understand each other, you know, people who un, look for win-win partnerships and uh, consider the other party in the, in the mm -hmm. position. Number two, so markets change, right? So how does a carrier manage the different shifts in the market? I'll let you go first and then I'll go on the broker side. Sure. Well, this one, it's, I want to say it's not an easy one since uh, no one can uh, completely uh, forecast the market since it's always changing. There's a lot of things. For example, the pandemic, it threw everything away <laughs> in a sense. So, uh, when it comes to local drivers, let's uh, talk about the local ones. Let's say Florida to Florida. Those ones are tough since uh, anyone that works in the Florida market right now for uh, reefers or even drive-ins, they know that it's not easy. And right now there's not much loads. There's not much drivers. So it's, it's hard uh, when the local market is so closed. So what do we do? Uh, we try to get our drivers out from, from Florida. That's what we're trying to do with the local ones. Uh, we're, we're encouraged them uh, to, to be inter, interstate. Since uh, if we have that opportunity, we can get them to places that there are more loads. So what, what do we do every week? We try to find the best places uh, that we call it like hotspots where, where they have a lot of loads. Uh, for example, Texas, they have a lot of loads. Mm -hmm. um, Illinois, uh, Oklahoma, Missouri, those are places that we know that if we get there, we're going to have a good rate coming out of them. Maybe we're not going to have a good rate going there, but we're going to have a good one going out of there. So what we try to do is uh, make a little strategy, find the best places and make a route. Where do we need to jump from here to there to get to the place that we want to be and then come back? That's sure. basically our strategy. And, and uh, you probably want them to stay out, right? Stay out of state for as long as possible because you know once they come back in, it's going to be the same struggle of getting them back out. That's right. And that's why we always uh, tell the drivers, if you want to go back to Florida, you're going to go back home. So <laughs> figure yourself out. If you really want to go there, then make sure that's going to be like the last uh, load for the week or for the month. It, it depends. Since we have a few drivers that make just a round trip up and down, but we have other that makes like 10, 15, 20 days. It really depends uh, on the driver, but that's basically what we do. Sure, sure. And then from the broker perspective, of course, you know, it's easier to tell a customer uh, that we can do a lower rate, but it's, 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 it's a lot. You know what? I'll, I'll rephrase that. Sure. As a broker, it's not good or bad when it's busy or slow. Because when it's busy, the customers, the shippers, you know, they really need the trucks, right? They'll take your phone call, you know, <laughs> they, they will have that conversation when you call them and you're prospecting them. Um, but if they're used to paying $2,000 on a load and now you want to, you're, you're quoting 3000 or, you know, even 500 bucks more, you know, yeah. there's going to be more resistance there, right? Yes. Whereas if it's a slower market, you know, they, the market might drop a little bit, but um, they might think it say, they might think of the market drop from like 2000 to 1800, but mm -hmm. when actuality it dropped more than that. So you can actually, you know, afford to, to get a truck in that situation slightly easier uh, where in the busier markets, you're begging the trucks, right? You're, you're begging yeah. the drivers, the begging the dispatchers to take the loads. You're, you know, jumping, you know, you're doing backflips just to, uh, to get them to agree to a multi-stop load, right? Yeah, we do a lot of multi-stop. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's not, not pretty being a broker because as a broker, you, a lot of the times agree to a rate many, many more uh, days before you know what you're going to pay the truck. You have yeah. little tools and you look on the DAT and there's other, other, other tools and you can, you know, post a load and talk to some drivers, but, you know, it's just a guess, right? Because you're, mm -hmm. you're posting three days in advance or not posting, but if you're quoting three days in advance, you're quoting three days in advance. So you really yeah. have to pay attention and, you know, 
for instance, you know, we just went through Thanksgiving, right? So um, brokers really don't like to do anything on the holidays. They don't like the holidays <laughs> because A, capacity is always a question. And B, if there is capacity, it's always going to be ridiculous rates. So yeah. um, you just got to be smart from a broker perspective not to overpromise because mm -hmm. um, it's tempting because all these shippers come out of the woodwork and they're like, hey, I need help. Can you cover this? Can you cover this? And of course, you want more business. You want to form new relationships, but you know you never want to uh, burn a bridge. You know, and put, you, put yourself in a bad spot. So you just got to be smart about it. Number three, uh, workers, your, your team, your ops team, your sales team, working remotely from in the office. So with us, we, um, we don't have a, a rule, right? It's flexible. You can work in the office. You can work remotely. As long as you're getting done what you need to get done, that's what we care about. Yeah. And um, we have KPIs, key performance indicators. We have weekly goals. We have a meeting every single day for about two minutes. Uh, it just sets the tone for the day. We review the board, the load board. We review um, maybe key things we're going to work on for the following day. And we go over one of our company values to keep our value system strong and also our policies, our company policies. So, for instance, um, if a load is, you know, being dispatched, you know, we, our policy is we need to talk to the driver specifically. Uh, we yeah. want to make sure we're talking to the drivers. Dispatchers are great. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, sometimes they don't know if they're, uh, you know, actually empty or maybe empty or, you know, we always like to just have that information. We don't hound drivers. You know, we just, we make sure we know they're empty, A, and then B, what's the ETA to the pickup? So yeah. it's pretty simple. But um, it's important to, to have that information. So how about you, Javier? How do you uh, approach the remote circumstance? Well, uh, actually, in this one uh, as well, we're very flexible. Um, I'm not sure how much does it defer the amount of um, communication that needs to go between uh, inside the brokers and inside the carriers, but I think it's very, very similar since we, we use a lot of tools, online tools besides emails, chats, uh, tasks, a lot of stuff. We do have our uh, team that works in Miami in the office and we have another team that works um, I'm from home. And they're actually very, um, how can I call this? It's not like just the dispatchers. Uh, most of the management does works in the office. And many of the dispatchers, for example, drive-ins and reefers, they work together in the office. And we have a small team that works off, outside the office. And we always have a meeting. We try to have one, uh, one big one every month. Uh, we try to have little ones every week. And we try to stay on top of our dispatchers. We, uh, right now I'm actually training one of our newest dispatchers. Uh, I'm not sure if you had a chance to meet him already, uh, Alfredo, I think Sebastian and, and Maria had. Uh, so right now we're working remotely, but we're always on a call. I'm always calling on you, hey, how you doing? What, do you need anything? Um, do you need help? So I think the opportunity of being, uh, working from home right now, it's very good due to technology. Every time it gets better, I think sure. it gets easier. And in a way, we're always working remotely since we are not right there with our drivers. Since exactly. it's always in a place that they need to call the driver or the broker. So I think it's very easy to work from home right now, but we always try to be close since it's good to, to see your your co-workers to, to be with them, have a lunch, have something to drink. That actually empowers a lot of the teamwork that we do. Absolutely. Yeah. The more you can do, you know, besides the actual job together, you know, mm -hmm. obviously that's going to build relationships and culture. There's a, uh, there's a company that we had on our, we have a shipper podcast called the food and beverage leaders podcast. So mm -hmm. uh, we had a company on called sourced source and it stands for craft cocktails, source craft craft oh, okay. cocktails and what they do is they send a uh, curated kit a drink kit to oh. <laughs> companies and then you know they have the team meeting and then after the meeting they have a drink so it's like it's like encouraging people to go back to the office it's encouraging people to get to know each other so yeah um that's nice yeah definitely uh, agree with you on that one so yeah as we wrap up here javier 
Um, anything you want to talk about with r &E carriers out of based out of Miami, Florida? Uh, let's say if a driver, maybe he's an owner operator, maybe he's a company driver, you know, for working for somebody else, he's looking for, um, you know, an, another carrier to join. Any anything you want to kind of touch on uh, regarding r &E? Well, with ourselves, um, what can I say? We're very, as you, as you can see, we're very relaxed. I know there's a lot of carriers that are like very aggressive. <laughs> I think I, I can say that. They're like, uh, give me this rate, uh, uh, give, help me with this, call this right, call the shipper, call the consignee because they're taking too long. But I, I don't know if you have seen it, the way that we work with Sebastian, it's very, very relaxed. I mean, we're just calling to let you know, Sebastian, this is going on, if you can help us out. But we, we try to be like a family. That's one of the ideals. I think the culture that uh, my boss and the, the owner of the company, Nelson, that he always tries to put on that whenever we start a meeting, he says, uh, now we're back together like a family. And I think that transcends tr not, not only between ourselves, but also to the uh, brokers, because that's the way that we, we want to be with you guys. We want you to feel familiar to us to see that we can be trustworthy and we, we try to, to exceed the expectations as well. Yes, no, I would definitely say you guys are calm in the heat of the moment. You know, their issues come up with everybody. Um, but when they do, maybe it's, you know, we're getting stuck at a receiver from the, the extra time or maybe the shipper's taking longer to, to make the product or to get it ready. Um, you know, it's, it's just nice. And you are 100% correct. The calmer you are, that's going to make me calm. Yeah. The more, the more, the more emotional you are, that's going to start to raise my blood pressure. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but I am centered enough and every broker is different, but I, I just, I don't even nine times out of 10, you know, there's still that one tenth time, but nine times out of 10, <laughs> I, 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 I stay calm and uh, yeah. just be like, you know, it's not worth the up and down. So, all right, let yeah. me, I might, I might put you on hold for two seconds and then just breathe and come back and be like, okay, let's, let, let's hit it. Let's but, do this. Yeah. yeah. But no, you've been working great with Sebastian and, um, and uh, Maria. So I uh, appreciate you guys a lot. Um, so with, with, with that, uh, I guess we'll wrap up this episode. And just as a reminder, so this is the Carrier Conversations podcast. Uh, we're going to come out with one episode, you know, at least a month, maybe, maybe twice a month. We'll kind of see how we ramp up here. But yes, Javier, just want to say thank you again. And I'll uh, leave with uh, one last question for you. Sure. What do you expect in 2022? Well, besides uh, the usual stuff, like, uh, please let's have more loads in Florida. It's crazy. <laughs> I think what we're trying to make is have better relationships, better a stronger bonds with the broker since we, when we have that, I know we can work together in, in, regardless if the market is bad, we can work together. So uh, that's what I'm looking for, better, stronger, and more united bonds, uh, professional bonds with the brokers. And how many uh, reefers do you have? Uh, we have 36, if I'm not mistaken, and four drive-ins. Okay, okay, very good, very good. There you go, folks. It was a pleasure, Javier, and we'll see you next time. Yeah, see you next time. Thank you so much. Have a nice day, buddy. You too. Thanks. All righty. Thank you for listening to today's Carrier Conversation podcast brought to you by Bar Transportation. Now, if you are a successful driver, dispatcher, or owner of a trucking company, and you believe you have some secret sauce to share, and enjoy helping others grow, then look no further. Simply go to bartrans.com, click on carriers, and you'll find the carrier podcast. Now, as you know, topics range the whole spectrum from maintenance to fuel, to driver recruiting, to something I'm not thinking of. Just absolutely tons to talk about and we'll never run out of topics. Lastly, if you enjoyed the podcast, please like, subscribe, tweet, reshare it with everyone you know. Tell other drivers at truck stops about it. Spread the word. As you know, collectively, we can learn a lot together, right? Knowledge is power. That's all for now. Keep those wheels turning. Stay safe. And remember, preparation plus opportunity equals success.